Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good and as excited as I am for this video. It has been a long time since I've done a silicon mold video. Now, if you saw this tray on my Instagram, this is a standard trinket tray that I've made many times before, but it's got an added tool rest with these divots. Now, these tool rests and these trays are super popular at the moment. If you've seen Instagram, you will be seeing them everywhere. They are used mainly by nail techs to hold their tools. Now, I asked about a week ago where I could find the mold you all directed me to Etsy when I realized they were handmade and I saw that as a challenge to myself to make one posted a video on my Instagram you were all so supportive and in agreement and really just urged me pushed me forward to create a video I already made this mold here this is old this silicon was a year out of date so I've gone ahead got myself some fresh silicon we're gonna make it properly and yep yeah, got my Fimo haven't really got the right tools but that's okay it comes out okay in the end so let's go <laughs> So the silicon I'm using is R Pro 10 or Pro R10, whichever way round. I got it from Amazon. I will link it below. There was a soft, medium and hard. I chose the soft one. I'm also going to be using my Fimo polymer clay. I have to put a disclaimer out there, guys. I am not a mold maker. I am not a polymer clay artist. Okay, I just do what I can with the tools I have. I definitely don't have the right tools for the job, but I can get the job done. What I do know about polymer clay is it needs to be conditioned before I can use it at this point it's solid so I just have to spend about half an hour molding it around in my hands warming it up to a point where I can actually mold it now if you saw that I did already previously make a mold for this tool rest I'm going to use those as a reference guide I'm rolling out my polymer clay into a long snake how you do it is up to you this is the way I've chosen to do it I'm using a really professional tool here called a sharpie pen and what I'm doing is I'm putting in my divots with the pen and every now and again I come back in with two lollipop sticks and I push the sides together to get it to go back up high put the pen back put the divots back make it as smooth as possible and when I'm happy I'm just cutting away the edges using my ones I made last week as a reference guide so I just go through I do the whole thing again I roll my snake I use the sharpie pen to dent I, what are the words guys can't find the words today to dent them and then I'm using the lollipop sticks to bring the sides straight so I created four they're all a little bit different some are wider than others two are thinner two are fatter so I put these on a baking tray in the oven at 100 degrees for one hour now tell me if I'm wrong if you're a polymer artist tell me if that was the right thing to do it worked so I don't really um, I don't really know if it was or not so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna make my mold what you want to do is use anything plastic you can use food containers now I've got these plastic boards I'll put the name on the screen and I'll link them below they are perfect for silicon molds and I got this I have to say I got this from the amazing resin ace because he was using these all the time when I used to watch his videos so what I'm gonna do is rest my molds so the pieces that I've molded I'm going to rest them on the board to get an idea of the base that I need the size of the base I'm not making an excessively large mold I'm just making one that pretty much houses the pieces that I've made if that makes sense I don't necessarily want to waste too much silicon so what I'm going to use I'm going to use my professional cutting tool called a lollipop stick and mark a line across the board as you would have just seen as soon as you mark this board with your blade as soon as you cut across you can then snap it so it's such an easy board to make so you can see here I just go ahead I mark across with my blade a couple of times just to score it and then it snaps so so neatly and so easily and that is how I created the base of my mold here you go so satisfying I should have left the sound on at this point for you because it's quite it's quite a satisfying sound now that I've got my base I know that all four of my molds all four of my polymer pieces fit I'm really happy at this point now I need to go and make all of the walls so I'm bringing that board back I'm going to cut just less than one inch deep on all four sides to create four walls for the mold now here you see me I'm sticking all four polymer clay pieces down to some sellotape this is sticky side up 
so that they stick down, they don't move, and that when I pour the silicon, the silicon won't seep down in and under those polymer clay pieces. I'm building up my four walls around the piece. That sellotape is so sticky and this board sticks like a dream. I'm then wrapping it like a gift. So I'm bringing up the tape from the sides, up the walls to make sure that when I pour the silicon, it's not just gonna pour out. You can also use hot glue. For me, sellotape is easier because it's then reusable. It peels away and I can use that mold again and again and again. Now here I am mixing up the silicon. Like I said, it is a 50-50 one-to-one. So I'm just eyeballing it from the front to make sure that they are both level in the two cups before I go ahead and mix it. You want to mix it. This silicon has a 40 minute work time. Again, not sponsored, I bought it myself, but it has a 40 minute work time. It took me about five minutes to mix it to the point where the both colors were blended and I was satisfied. Now pouring silicon, you have to pour from really high up. So I'm about a foot and a half off of my table at this point, way above the camera. You have to pour from high up to get rid of any air bubbles. It's the opposite of resin. With resin, you pour quite close to your work. But here you see me going out over the edges because, you know, what fun. <laughs> and that is it. I fill the mold up. This cures in three hours, but I am going to leave it for 24 Right, this is 24 hours later, and this is not soft. This is not soft. I was expecting soft. I thought I'd bought the soft one. This feels quite hard, but it has set, which is exciting. So all I'm going to do now is just pull away the edges and then use my blade to cut the sellotape. So I'm just going to go look at my crude mold. <laughs> if you are a seasoned mold maker, please forgive my, forgive my lack of ability here, but gonna pull this away it comes away so nicely and then I will keep these pieces to make another mold at another date should I need to so I'm just gonna slice gently along the tape look at that that is so gorgeous and again here wow wow now this side did have a lot of tape on so hopefully it comes away quite easily here it comes oh my goodness look at this this is so cool guys I get so excited don't I over the smallest things you can see how wonky they are so yeah like I said if you are a if you are a professional polymer clay artist and a mold maker look away I don't want to hurt your soul but yeah I am super super chuffed with that chuffed to bits right I'm gonna get my scissors and I'm just gonna trim off all of this excess which you can see here around the edges you can't just rip it because I don't want to rip the mold and then we'll crack on and we'll make a tray. So I've already mixed my jesmonite to save you sitting through that. I'm going for a dark, moody marble. I'm really mixing it in, like unlike most other marbles where you want defined lines. This tray takes 100 grams liquid, 250 powder, but I've made a little bit more because I know I now want some for my brand new silicon mold for the tool rests. And I'm hopefully going to match it as best I can to the tray. Now I am, I am filling up all four. That's just going to give me three extras for the future and that is it job is done we're gonna shimmy and we're gonna shake and we're gonna get all of those air bubbles out and I do shake a lot longer than what you see on camera here this is just showing you an example of lifting it up and hitting it off the table but I do shake a lot longer time to demold and we shall see how this came out now if you fill your mold right to the very top there's minimal sand in so let's have a look Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, like stormy skies. So now for this, I'm going to turn it upside down because what I'm worried about is the jesmonite cracking. Just turn it upside down and ease them out like this. And there they are. Love them. Love them. Right, now, 
I made mine a little bit too big. You'll remember um, when I started, I made them a tad bit too wide. So what I'm just going to do is run this on some sandpaper just to get it perfectly where I want it. I'm just going to run the ends, keep testing it. And now I just need to run the end on this one. I would rather do it like this than make one that is, oh, look at that. Perfect fit. Absolutely perfect, perfect fit. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this overnight to fully cure, okay? And then I'm going to use some super glue. I'm actually going to run the bottom of this over the sandpaper tomorrow. And then I'm going to run some of my Gorilla Glue super glue on here and just stick it down in place and that will be it that will be it I absolutely love it now if I had any nail tools if I was adulting properly I would have nail tools but I don't I don't have anything like that to actually display it with all of the kit in there and I'm not gonna buy it for the purpose of doing so but I hope you have enjoyed this video and I am loving the results I'm absolutely loving it I, I am so chuffed so so chuffed yeah, I can't, I can't even tell you how much I love this. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found the silicone mold process um, easy-ish to follow. I probably did make it a little bit long-winded with all of the tape. You can find your own way. Use hot glue as well, that works. But yeah, I love the results. I love the fact that it's worked. It's turned out. I now have these ready to go. So I will leave these to dry so that I can use them on the next trays. Just sand the edges and make them a little bit neater. But yeah. I hope you do drop me a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.